Max Kaiser of MaxKaiser.com joins us, and uh, he's here. We're going to take calls as well. Uh, Max, I got to say it, every time you're on, every few weeks, and you're gracious to come on with us, I know you're over there in England, it's late. Uh, my friend, I mean, the Stiglitz announces depression in Europe. It's all banker occupation. Uh, the Iran situation's heating up. What is the latest, Max Kaiser, on the announcements of the euro going under one megabank and the, and, the, and the Rothschilds and Rockefellers merging that the Financial Times of London's reporting on? What is the latest? Um, Max Kaiser, inventor of the Hollywood virtual stock exchange system, retired top broker uh, and all-around uh, TV and radio host. Max Kaiser, what is the latest? Latest. Hey, Alex, great to be back with you. Yes, uh, what's happening? You know, we're here in London because London is about to experience a pretty sharp collapse that, that's going to follow Greece and follow Spain. Uh, it's going to come to London. The, the, the Prime Minister, David Cameron, he, um, he, he's picked a fight with the European Union, the European Commission. And the European Commission, the ECB, which includes, of course, Germany, France uh, primarily, and they operate out of Brussels, they don't want Britain. Uh, Cameron keeps saying that, you know, we, we don't agree with your bank reforms. Uh, but the fact is that Britain's, uh, Germany's playing a masterful game here because they're trying to kick uh, Britain out of the Eurozone completely because they want Frankfurt in Germany to be the major banking center in Europe to, to supplant London as being the major banking center. And the banking center here in London has come under incredible attack for fraud, uh, the Barclays LIBOR rigging scandal, uh, Royal Bank of Scotland and Lloyds Bank, and um, all the major banks here are now embroiled in major scandals. And David Cameron, the prime minister, keeps talking about he wants to defend the banks from regulators. Uh, meanwhile, the people in Europe are saying, it's so toxic in London. It's such a train wreck in London. It's such a, a regulatory cesspit. We don't want anything to do with London. So uh, they're going to do everything going forward in euros. The British pound is going to be an isolated currency. Britain is going to be more and more isolated. And nobody here really understands that. So we're here. We moved the show from Paris to London because we want to document over the next 12 to 24 months the collapse of Britain into a, a, a Greece-style social chaos. So that's your prediction. What do you say on your prognosis for the total collapse that you believe will start being triggered in April? And again, quantifying it simply, what a total collapse is. Right. The, uh, I've been sticking to my prediction of total uh, currency collapse by April, anytime between now and April. And I haven't changed my thoughts on that. Uh, the situation, as you pointed out at the top, continues to deteriorate in terms of people recognizing that there is uh, more of a depression going on around the world. In, in the U.S., you have something very deceptive at the moment in that real estate prices are up, let's say, over the past two quarters. But if you look at what that's all about, you find that the hedge fund community, the fast money community, is showing up in Phoenix and Florida, Detroit. They're throwing money at these properties as flippers uh, to make a quick buck. But there is a, a very concentrated and a very small number of funds. But there is no wide scale housing recovery as such. So that number. So it's little really micro stuff. bubbles here and there. Exactly. A great way to put it. It's a micro bubble. If you look at the stock market today, we're seeing something interesting, Alex. Uh, in that the stock market is losing, you know, to, to, to use a Wall Street term, it, it's losing its leadership. So Intel, Microsoft, McDonald's, and General Electric, these are big companies, big capitalized companies. They're all trading down. Google yesterday, of course, came in with bad earnings. The stock dropped 10% in five minutes right on the opening. You also have Apple Computer now. Uh, is trading down 60 or $70 from its all-time high, and it looks like Apple Computer is going to go through a period of uh, trading down. Now, it's very significant when you're talking about Apple Computer because you're talking about the biggest company in the world by market cap, over $600 billion. It's by far the biggest component of the NASDAQ, which is that huge part of the market in the United States that has the fast growers. or that some Yeah, that's growers. Bernie Madoff's uh, creation, very loving. Bernie Madoff was one of the was one of the um, chairman at some point of Nasdaq, and he was 
uh, involved. That's where his platform, where he committed a lot of the fraud that he did commit. But even before Bernie was there and now after Bernie was there, it's the place where technology companies like Google, Apple, Amazon, and these others go public as to where they're traded. What's going and on with Facebook? What are these uh, these uh, sell-offs of things like Apple? What does that foretell? Well, the uh, Facebook is aligned with a company more, I would say, if you look at a company I've mentioned on this uh, show before, Zynga, the virtual currency and virtual property company. Zynga announced horrible earnings and is crashing down. It's down something like 80 or 90 percent from its IPO, which was only six months ago. So that impacts very negatively on Facebook. Facebook has yet to really come up with a business plan that would indicate that they're going to make some significant money going forward. Uh, so that's uh, that's down in the teens again. Went public at 38. It's down below 20. It got to as low as 17 and a half. There's been a report by Janet Tabacoli recently, very respected Chicago-based money uh, manager and analyst who thinks Facebook is going to trade down to five dollars a share. So that would be more than a 90 percent drop from its initial public offering. So that's also very negative for these markets because nothing can go public. Uh, you got the big cap stocks are trading down. Today, of course, is the 25th anniversary of the crash of 1987, which I was there. I participated in that crash. I was working in New York. I know it very well. I sent uh, Chris, your, one of your producers, a video when I was on CBS News being interviewed after the crash of 87. You see Max Kaiser is a 27-year-old stockbroker. It's kind of amusing. Uh, uh, so I tell you what, I want to find that video. Uh, Chris, the main producer, is out because he, he went like you know 20 hours then went home. Uh, and he's coming back tomorrow as we're going to 11 a.m. tomorrow oh, okay. in the 48-hour transmission. But let me just ask you the name of the video, and we'll pull it up. What's the name? It's called Max Kaiser Crash of 1987. My my bit comes in at around two two minutes and 20 seconds. Okay, Max Kaiser, the crash of 87 on YouTube. That'll get it? Yeah. All right, we'll, we'll pull and, and that so up. Here we have that. that, that that's the, it's, a, it's a fun piece. Uh, it goes back 25 years. And when I was working as a stockbroker in New York, uh, during the crash. But a great uh, story came out today from PIMCO. You know, PIMCO is the biggest bond manager in the world. Bill Gross is, uh, manages uh, hundreds of billions of dollars. He made a comparison between now and 1987 with, with something called portfolio insurance. And I know this very, very well from my days on Wall Street. People with large stock market accounts, you sell them what's called portfolio insurance. You give them the illusion that they only have 2 or 3% risk in their portfolio by trading options. Uh, but, of course, when you have so many people doing the exact same trade over billions and hundreds of billions of dollars worth of stocks, you end up with a huge concentration that eventually blows up, as it did in 1987. Now, what we have today in the year 2012 is we have this similar contraption to portfolio insurance. It's called derivatives. And people believe that these derivative contracts are giving them protection on the downside that they can buy these huge positions, and if they hedge their positions using derivatives, that their risk is manageable and quantifiable. And what I can tell you right now, and this is, plays into my thesis of between now and April, global currency collapse, is that once again we will discover that that is impossible to insure everyone's portfolio equally. That's an, an impossibility, and yet they sell it as, it, as, as it's a possibility, and we're going to see once again a crash, except it'll be 1987, but 20 or 30 times bigger, and it'll be a, this time a currency crash, and it's in the it's baked into the cake, it's it's in the pipeline. But the thing that'll fix it will be having checkpoints on the highways and TSA groping our families and funding al-Qaeda to attack nations, and then they'll have a fake patsy who they give a visa to and bring into the country try to blow up the Federal Reserve, the poor little sweet Federal Reserve, they would never stage a false flag patsy event. I mean, this is just Max Kaiser. We should be thanking the bankers for what they're doing. America is having a nervous breakdown. The, the TSA events and these fake uh, presidential debates are something you would see in a mental ward. <laughs> suffering from d d deep dementia and uh, psychotropic dementia and, and other mental illnesses. I agree. All right, so it's Have you ever thing. watched a crazy person, say a homeless person, it's very sad, but you sit there maybe in a cafe watching them out the window, and you start feeling crazy watching the craziness? I mean, you know, don't look in the abyss lest you become the abyss. I mean, this is really getting nuts, Kaiser. Well, it's a combination of a, a mental asylum and a cult, because you also have cult-like qualities. When you have, like Mitt Romney 
he's not a psychotic so much as a cult leader. He's like Jim uh, Jones and the cult of Guyana, where he got everyone to drink the the uh, the, the Kool Aid laced with cyanide. And that's what private equity is about. That's where he comes from, the world of private equity, where he he, he hypnotizes people into believing that by stripping corporations of all their assets and selling them off and firing everybody that somehow that's good for the for the for the economy and good for america that's like burning down your house and saying i had to do it because nothing else could have saved the house so i burned it down or america remember in vietnam they had to destroy the village to save the village you know mitt romney's attitude is we've got to burn down these corporations strip them of all their assets using private equity to save them and he wants to take that cult-like mentality and apply it to America. He wants to do a leverage buyout of America, sell all the assets he possibly can to private bankers, save the difference for himself so his net worth goes... And have us killer. pay taxes to give him banker bailouts. I mean, that's important. Is That's free market. Well, no, it's a sideshow. The, the point is that Mitt Romney looks at other oligarchs around the world, and he wants to be a 10 to $15 billion player as well. He is jealous of the 15 to $20 billion players. He's got less than a billion dollars. So in his mind, he's a shrimp dick, as we used to say on Wall Street. So he's got to really step up his game. So he's f figured out that if he does a leverage buyout of America, he can make himself 10 or $15 billion, which he could if he pulls it off. Uh, on the other side of the aisle, Barack Obama, uh, somebody mentioned on your show earlier, I think it was Gerald Salente, that the Obama deception was a fantastic film. And I, I've said that for the last seven, whatever, four years, I guess, that the Obama deception is the best Alex Jones film because it totally predicted what happened. I myself was taken in by Obama when he was running for president. I gave him the benefit of the doubt like an idiot. Uh, your film cut through all that, and it's been completely true. He's, he is an absolute a nothing but a puppet, empty suit. He, he, he reneged on every single promise except one. He did buy his kids a dog. Well, and he eats organic but doesn't want us to. You know, I, I watch Obama. He looks very unhealthy now. What is it that happens to presidents where they go gray and they age 20 years in four years? Well, what happens? Do they you know, maybe have their own body scanner there or are aliens in the basement? They replace their brain? I mean, well, I mean, I mean, what's going on here? I have no doubt that being president of the United States is a stressful job. And since you have to be on uh, on call 24 hours a day, I'm pretty sure that the president is on drugs 24 hours a day and that his his entire schedule is medicated so that he is ready to make a decision because at any given moment, something might happen that he needs to make a decision on. And we saw that with George Bush. I think George Bush, his reputation for being quote unquote dumb was overplayed. I think in his case, he was less able to handle the demands of being Oh, yeah, when he was governor, he had brown hair. He gave pretty good speeches without teleprompters. And within about a year in office, he was a gibbering uh, lobotomy patient. But those are the drugs that they have to keep you uh, alert to, to make these decisions. And once you enter the presidential bubble, you completely lose track with what's happening. No, no, no. that's just like the ancient Chinese bounding people's women, uh, you know, bounding women's feet, not letting them walk. I think that the whole cloistered inner cult, like JFK injecting them with methamphetamine, exactly, it's well known. They absolutely, it's your responsibility to get up at 5 a.m. We have to have this briefing. Don't worry, sir, the Air Force takes these pills. They take them immediately, and then, huh, those pills may feel horrible. Don't worry, sir, we have an injection for you. And it's kind of this medical tyranny that's taken over the rest of the West. It really takes over the president. I really wish in America you had the possibility of a genuine grassroots campaign like a Teddy Roosevelt or somebody who comes up from who really communicates and then becomes elected based on a, a philosophy and an ideology and, a, and conviction that they believe in. But in America today, uh, anyone who comes along like a Ron Paul or even a Ralph Nader, who I think had a lot of good qualities. Uh, you know, they get decapitated by the media. Insider billionaire investors like George Soros and John Paulson have recently made massive moves into gold, purchasing what Bloomberg News described as gold hoards. Soros alone doubled his holdings in a single day. 
Russia's Vladimir Putin has doubled down on gold, increasing the country's holdings by over 100%. With $1.8 trillion under management, the bond king Bill Gross, the world's preeminent bond fund manager at PIMCO, has warned investors of the dangers of QE3 and inflation. And what's he betting on? You guessed it, gold. Friends, this is Alex Jones for MidasResources.com. For more than 15 years, I have exclusively used Midas Resources for all my precious metal needs. Whether it's bullion or collectibles you're looking for, Midas Resources is simply the best. I own my gold as a hedge against inflation. This Federal Reserve fiat currency could go the way of the Deutsche Mark and the Weimar Republic any time. In these historically dangerous times, it makes sense to physically hold gold and silver. Midas already has some of the best deals in the industry. But if you give them a call and mention the radio special, they will give you a list of the day's super specials. Midas brokers are standing by to answer all your questions at 800-686-2237. They also have a lot of informative free literature explaining the opportunities and risk of holding precious metals. They are ready to answer your questions at 800-686-2237. Again, that's 800-686-2237. It's a listener's idea. Money bomb's great. We raise about two hundred thousand dollars. We usually raise about three hundred to five hundred thousand over a day. We're doing a forty-eight hour. We need this to get extra satellite uplinks and the systems we need. It's very expensive. I mean, we're coming from nothing here up to fifteen million people a week. And you know, we have sponsors and things we sell. But sometimes to expand, we need the support. So I want to thank all of you that have donated and ask others to donate today, uh, if you can, at Infowars. Moneybomb.com or 888-253-3139. Now, if you're watching us at prisonplanet.tv right now, we're going to your calls in the next hour with Max Kaiser, and we got an Ask Christie coming up. we got a whole laundry list of amazing guests after that. Look at the full roster and send out the free video feed, everybody you know. You can at least email it out to people or post it on your Facebook or Twitter at InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com. We can punch it up on screen. But if you look on screen now, if you're a radio listener, um, again, just go over to InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com, and then you can see everything that's on screen right there, punching that up. Uh, it's flashback. Max Kaiser discusses the 87 stock market crash on Dan Rather's show. But I want to play the whole clip because you can see the still there at 17 seconds. You know, stockbrokers laughing with six cigars in their mouth, little kids making jokes. And, and these are the people that are in control now, disconnected from reality, taught eugenics is great, taught it's good to rob everyone, taught it's good to cheat everyone. And Max can attest to all this. We're going to play this clip and then get Max's take on it and then go to the next hour and take your calls. Uh, but let's uh, go ahead now. Uh, and again, if you're listening on AM and FM, support those local stations. And if your station, you know, uh, doesn't carry the, the next hour. Again, it's important. The video feed is at InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com or InfoWars.com to continue watching. But here's flashback. Max Kaiser discusses the 87 stock market crash on Dan Rather's show. Here it is. And not to New York broker Max Kaiser. But the idea of a yuppie, you know, money uh, without stopping, that that's not the case anymore. I'm, I personally, I'm glad to see it. I'm sick of yuppies. No more yuppie chow. No more yuppie magazines. No more yuppie clubs. No more yuppies. Great. That's the only thing we accomplished, if anything. We got rid of the yuppies, and I'm, I'm happy about it. All right, we got Kaiser for the rest of the hour. We're going to do an Ask Christie later. Joseph Ferris coming up. It's a huge laundry list of incredible guests. I promise we're going to get to Jim in Illinois listening on 13, uh, 1530 AM, WCKG and others. Uh, Josh and Jeff and Mike and many others. Toll free number to join us, 800-259-9231. But, but what did happen in the 87 crash? And, and boy, that foretelling thing of the guy from the Depression saying people wouldn't be able to deal with what we dealt with. Now things are 20 or 30 times worse, like you said. What will it be like if there is a total collapse? I mean, it'll just be, I, I can't imagine what it'll be like with all these modern super wimpies. They're not even yuppies. They're super trendy wimpy wimpies. Yeah, since the 87 crash, there's been wave after wave of deregulation to make subsequent crashes worse. We had the dot-com crash, which was worse in 2000. You had the uh, subprime bubble and crash, which was huge. Uh, now we're heading into the mother and father and cousins and uncles, the biggest crash of all, because the brokers on Wall Street and in the city of London believe that they can technologically hedge themselves against this risk. The exact same thing that led to the crash in 87, that you could put on multi-million dollar trades but be hedged, that you knew what the risk was and it was quantifiable. They've made this mistake every five or six years and the crashes get bigger and bigger. Now they've done the same thing with the global currency market, which is a $4 trillion per day market. 
And when this blows up, as it will between now and April, then you're talking about global currency collapse, and you're talking about, of course, gold and silver um, trading up to, again, keep continuing to trade up at all-time highs against every major paper currency in the world. By the way, they uh, are having more U.S. envoys and front people killed at embassies around the world. Security chief dies in Beirut blast, live updates, and they're saying Assad's behind it. I want to talk some about that proxy war against the Syrians and the Russians with al-Qaeda on the side of the West. I mean, it's just, it's very bold to know the media will never point to I mean, they point it out, but people don't even know what they're reading. We're going to be getting to that, but just briefly, because we're going to come back and take calls, Max, for a while. How crazy does it have to get? I mean, now al-Qaeda publicly works for the West? Well, I was at the House of Commons yesterday, and I had lunch with George Galloway, who is now back in government here in the U.K., and uh, we're planning a trip to Beirut. Remember, I, I talked to you from Beirut once before. We did a few shows from Beirut, Lebanon, and uh, we're planning a trip to go back. Uh, clearly, um, there's a lot of action there again, and uh, we want to get a front row seat and do a little trip over there, so hopefully we can do a lot, another live show from Beirut to the InfoWars audience. Absolutely, Max. I mean, I tell you, um, <laughs> again, I just keep saying I'm pinching myself because it's all coming true. We've been totally right. It's getting worse by the minute. It's getting more and more insane. And I've got this feeling we ain't seen nothing yet. Well, the, you know, it's all economic and finance and the uh, progression of the conquest of the economy by Wall Street and the city of London has continued uninterrupted for 30 years, and it's gained speed during Clinton. You know, he got rid of Glass-Steagall. He brought about the um, the uh, Commodity Futures Modernization Act, which made derivatives trading legal. Before that, they were considered gambling and illegal. And under Clinton and, and then Obama, we've had just more deregulation and more escalation uh, of these uh, global fraudsters who can have us by the throat. You remember back in 2008 when uh, Hank Paulson wanted to give his buddies at Goldman Sachs a multi-billion dollar bonus? He took the senators back, back to the back room and threatened martial law. The next day, they gave him three quarters of a trillion dollars. So they learned that all you need to do is crash the market a bit, a bit of a flash crash to a 1987 style crash uh, you know natural gas was down eight percent in five minutes uh, but but max this whole proxy war uh that is going on and uh, raging all over the place and, and this latest bombing in lebanon that i'll just put on screen right here i've actually just got it um here up on my screen so i can just pull that up for viewers myself um where do you see this whole thing going max uh, the the, uh, the uh, craziness in syria well, you know, it's, uh, it all goes back to Israeli-Palestine conflict. And Moscow apparently just came out with a statement saying they're going to get more active in defending the Palestinians against incursion from the occupying forces of, of Israel. So um, that's an interesting development because now uh, Russia is stepping up into the very hot, hot issue of the Israeli-Palestinian uh, conflict. You know, the, the Palestinians have very few friends. Uh, the, very few people, even in the Muslim world, support the Palestine. Certainly not the Sunnis over there in Saudi Arabia. They're in bed with the Americans and, and the British. Uh, the, uh, the Shia Muslims, of course, uh, offer some support, but they're fighting a war uh, against uh, the Troika of Israel, Britain, and Israel. So they're in a hot war. So now Russia is stepping in. So this is uh, very, very interesting. I, I guess since America is sending three huge... Uh, battleships to uh, sit off the coast of Iran, uh, Russia figures, you know, why not? We're just going to make a scramble uh, over here and, and, and uh, make some friends in this community where we can secure some additional uh, oil and gas <laughs> reserves and let America blow itself up. Uh, they, they allowed America to enter Afghanistan to get blown up, you know, stuck in the Afghanistani territories. You know, Russia knows all about that. They, they hear America, come on into Afghanistan, get sunk in a quagmire for 20 years. Uh, now they're going to let them get stuck in this, this Iranian uh, conflict. So Russia's playing chess and America's playing checkers. But it's more than that. The global mega banks want to bankrupt America, want to demoralize our military, and they're getting hundreds of billions, 500 billion a year conservatively. Even the IMF admits that of, of smack, uh, heroin, uh, you know, stuff they mainline. 
uh, to ship it in so our sons and daughters can use it and then be put in private prisons owned by mega banks that launder the drug money and run the aircraft on record. Uh, so, I mean, it's all there. So, you know, we think of it as, oh, America's doing something dumb. Well, no, it's not. America uh, is there to be run into the ground like everybody else because these bankers are preying on everyone. I mean, isn't that really what's happening in the final oh. equation? The U.S. has the reserve currency, which insulates them, as we've discussed before. That's why I'm saying that the biggest shock collapse of a country is going to be Britain. That's why I'm here, to document the collapse of Britain into Greece-like anarchy, because this economy is getting set to crash spectacularly. The, the prime minister is isolating himself from the European a union, and he's got no friends when he really turns around and relies on Israel and, and America as friends. That's a joke. That's like having Genghis Khan and Jack the Ripper as your friend. So they're really setting themselves up for a tremendous collapse here. We want to be front row and center covered for, you know, the Kaiser report. Oh, how sweet. A uh, bomb hits Beirut, live updates, London Guardian. Uh, and uh, Saeed Harari, the son of Rafiq Harari, the former prime minister who was assassinated by a bomb in Beirut 2005, has accused Syrian President Bashir Assad of orchestrating the killing today uh, of the head of security there. And there's more and more of these heads of security getting killed. And the word is the Ruskies. And I think, I think there's something to this. I'm not saying this is what people are like, well, which is it, Alex? You said this, you said that. Well, I mean, we don't know. We are trying to figure it out. All these people that know exactly what it is, you know, and, you know, one day into it have all the answers is pure baloney. We normally learn things in hindsight, which most people don't even care to know where Syria is or Lebanon is. It's just north of uh, Israel. Uh, but this is a huge proxy war, and it's getting crazier by the minute. Let's go to Jim in Illinois. You're on the air with Max Kaiser. You're a 1530 AM listener in Chicago, WCKG. Go ahead, Jim. Alex and Max, a dynamic duo. Good to hear your voice. Quick question for Max. Uh, you talked about it, Alex. We all know in our gut there's definitely something coming down the pipe. We don't know what and when. Economically, Max, what do we do to um, be prepared for this that's about to come? And quickly, Alex, after he answers, could you shift me back to your studio? Because studio guys, I'd like to direct them to a website. But that's a question, Max. What do we do to prepare? Go ahead. I, I mean, I, I mean, it's it's nothing that's different than what we've been saying for five years, Alex. I mean, I don't, do we have to say the same thing over and over again? The I mean, answer to solution. Chicago. But, you know, it's obviously in a paper money collapse. Only keep money in the bank. Only keep money in paper money that you're happy to lose. Okay? That should be your guide. If you have money in the bank or you have money in paper money, dollars or euros, only keep money in paper that you're happy to lose. Because you're going to lose it. Okay? Only The only real money going forward is gold and silver. So that'll be your money. That's your wealth. If you don't have any gold and silver, you don't have any money. It's as simple as that. And that's, that's the, we're going back to the gold and silver as it's been the case for 5,000 years. We've always been on a gold standard. Well, the elites are all now piling in and buying gold while bad-mouthing it out of the other side of their mouth. Of course. Well, that's right. It goes through three stages. First, nobody wants gold and silver. Then the contrarians start to buy, like Ted Anderson, you know, back when it was two fifty, three hundred dollars an ounce, he started to buy gold and talk about it on your show. Then the second stage is the so-called smart money. This would be the George Soros. This would be the John Paulson, not to be confused with Hank Paulson. Other hedge fund managers, even Pimco, which is a huge bond manager, they start buying big positions in these metals. The third stage is when the public enters the market and there's a panic buying stampede. That's when you see that manic burst like you saw in the 79.80 phase, right, where you saw gold trade to seven, dollars $800 an ounce, but this time we're talking about gold topping out at $10,000 an ounce. Absolutely well said. Uh, you're, you're absolutely right about that. And I don't, yeah, don't be mean to Jim. We have a lot of new listeners because that, that is a new affiliate just the last few weeks there in Chicago. Uh, you know, they say, what do we do? I mean, they probably have an idea too, Max. They just want to hear what you have to say. Okay, great. Well, it's an axiomatic that if you have a banking system that has $800 trillion in claims, that's the global derivatives market on a total base money supply around the world, not even one one hundredth that amount, you're heading for a rebalancing 
of gold and silver at $10,000 an ounce and $500 an ounce, respectively. And by the way, on your show the other day, you said I was wrong about silver trading to $500 an ounce. Let me make this record clear. I said that before this bull market is over, silver will trade at $500 an ounce. This bull market is not over. We have five, six, seven years left on this market. We will see that $500 an ounce. Well, Max, I was, hold on, Max, 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 Max. Okay. Furthermore, furthermore, furthermore. Furthermore, 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 furthermore. Be quiet. <laughs> I can just turn him down with this entertaining. Go ahead. Yes, sir. I said if your <laughs> listeners and people around the world were each to buy a hundred of one ounce or two ounces, you need a hundred million people, which is easily doable around the world, people being victimized by these banking charlatans, you could get to that five hundred dollars an ounce is whenever you wanted to get to five hundred dollars an ounce. It's because of lazy, no good, shiftless. People around the world who complain and don't do anything that we have silver stuck at thirty four. Go buy one. Hey, Max, one. Max, I was I was not. Sick of it. I'm sick of that. Put him on hold. Put him. I'm sick of that. Stop it, Max. Man. All right, getting back to what I was going to say. If, yeah, fade you down for just a minute there. I, I'm saying. I, I, if I remember your prediction, you were saying in, in, sooner than what's happened, five hundred dollars an ounce. And I was saying Max is a smart guy. Most of what he said has happened. I hope he's wrong about this total collapse by April. And I said, you know, you haven't been a hundred percent right, and that, that I don't have a heart attack over that. Go ahead, Max. You don't think uh, what your show is listened to very, very closely by people on my side? We dissect your show line by line, word by word, Alex, because we do the work necessary to keep abreast of the global trends, and we need to know exactly what you're saying because <laughs> that's what we do. Okay, we 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 we're tracking you very closely, Alex. I don't know if you're aware of this. But, you know, you, you can't say a word on the air or tweet a tweet without going through a direct compilation of data and information that I personally oversee. Okay, Lord Kaiser, I'm, 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 I am being watched. Seriously, though, uh, the good news is medical discovery, transfusions of your blood appear to rejuvenate the elderly. Well, the Queen Mother was getting blood transfusions forever. Remember Al Gore has a little refrigerator of blood. Let me tell you something. Candy corn does the same thing. <laughs> All right, let's not degenerate yet. Uh, I hope that answered your question, sir, in Chicago. That was a great question. Thank you. Amazing medical discovery. Transfusions of young blood appear to rejuvenate the elderly. I mean, that's been one of the biggest things they've done for 50, 60 years. They've known that. People with cancer, you name it. I guess they don't want you knowing any real treatments, but the rich people all get that. And now they've been doing transfusions on uh, gray-whiskered mice. And, uh, well, uh, looks like vampire movies are on to something so far. Really? Well, it, well, the stomach doesn't digest blood well, but there's mentally ill people that like it. But, it, but, but healthy blood, if it's not diseased with something of your blood type, if your cells are old and you're breaking down, yeah, there's all sorts of stuff. Uh, it says human history altering newsflash. Oh, that yeah, talk about sensational when it's not warranted. Scientists have demonstrated that injections of youthful blood carry semi-magical rejuvenating qualities, at least for gray-whiskered mice. The researchers believe that the same might hold true for humans, suggesting disease like Alzheimer's. It goes on. Uh, that's like saying, it's semi-magical. He got a heart transplant. And now he can walk. It's semi-magical. You know, you, I mean, Max Kaiser, what do you say to this? Perhaps we should have a new tax where we have to, like, slit our throats and bleed directly into bankers' mouths. That might actually become something new where the TSA has to chop your head off and drink your blood to make sure you're not bad. The more, more effective than the transfusions of young blood is fecal transplants. This is actually documented. You can look it up. Do a Google search right now. If you have an enema with somebody else's fecal matter, uh, the, and the germs and the <laughs> colony from the uh, transplanted fecal matter actually give you greater immune. It, it boosts your immune system. Look up fecal transplant on Google. <laughs> Where do you come up with this come stuff? Come up with it. Go look for it. Go look for it. I told you. This, right. this is better than the blood transfusion fact. <laughs> I'm afraid to even search that. Search that. Well, your listeners aren't, aren't afraid like you, you big scaredy cat. <laughs> All right, knock it off, Kaiser. Let's talk to Josh in Georgia. You're on the air. <laughs> I'm sorry, folks. Josh it's in Georgia. Look it up. Okay, I, okay, okay. Jo uh, J uh, Josh in Georgia, go ahead. You're on the air with a madman. Hey, Alex. I uh, just want to say I've been a fan since uh, a few years ago. I uh, watched uh, Waking Life. 
and uh, loved every minute of it, especially your little uh, segment in there. Um, uh, by the way, I've got to say, uh, he's right. New York Daily News, uh, fecal transplant sounds gross but saves lives. What the hell? Uh, <laughs> what? Uh, uh, it's, all, it's, all, it's all true to me. You know, and let, why don't you tell people that in that movie, Waking Life, Alex, I did the, your voiceover for that. I, I played you in that movie. That was my voice playing Alex Jones. Why don't you tell the truth? I didn't know that, but I, okay, I believe you. Be, be serious. The fecal transplant thing's real. This is not morning radio. And 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 and, and I, I did my. It's me in Waking Life. Uh, yeah, no, you're right. I was just testing it. I wanted to see if you recognize even yourself. But there you are in the movie, bigger than life, and you're not getting a fecal transplant, but you're talking about it because it's healthy. <laughs> okay, oh man, please, sir, please uh, stop. Uh, uh, let's go to Josh. Josh, make sure it goes in the right end, Alex. A lot of people. That's enough. Mistakes. That's enough. We have a family. Go ahead, uh, Josh. Like the vibes from that movie is polyester. I don't know the movie. Go ahead, Josh. You have a question for. Her. Alex, mm -hmm. yes. yes, I've got, I've got a, got a question for. Well, you can both chime in here. Um, it it's pretty much boils down to where do we draw the line? Uh, pl uh, police brutality on the rise. TSA, uh, the, the Second Amendment on, on the, uh, the line of, of getting uh, cut out. The First Amendment, you know, these free speech zones. Um, I'm all for peaceful protests, but where, where is the line? Listen, listen, they have announced they are coming. He is going to ban all the semi-autos and say we have mental problems and take our guns, which is not fair to most of us. It would be fair with Max. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's horrible the point we've gotten to here. Here's what you do. Everybody should mimic what Benjamin Netanyahu did in the U.N. when he had the cartoon of the bomb and the big, big red marker. And he said, here's the line. And Iran can't cross this line. Okay, so now when you go to the TSA, when you go through the airport, you take out a big cartoon of a, of, a, of, a, of a cartoon version of a bomb or something with a big red marker. When he comes to touch you, you say, here's the line. You're crossing the line. Then everybody hold up their Netanyahu poster and say, we're not going to cross the line. Yeah, this is the line. We're, you can't cross the line. Uh, listen, I want to commend everybody that's given so far to the InfoWars Money Bomb 2012, this once a year event, so we can get the satellite uplinks, launch the show, free to air out to more people, uh, the TV show, and a lot of other things we want to get done around here. We've radically expanded our operations against the globalist, and uh, it's uh, really having a big effect. But I want to thank all of you that are calling and donating at 888 253 3139. And I want to thank all of you that are also uh, donating online with PayPal or credit card at InfoWarsMoneyBomb. Dot com. You can also donate by getting a PrisonPlanet.tv membership and then sharing with your friends and family. Six people can sign in simultaneously with the same passcode. So it's really six memberships a month for five ninety five. dollars uh, It supports us. Uh, every little bit counts when you buy ProPure water filters, live straw, discounted in Uh If you give 100 bucks, you can get one of these T-shirts, uh, the, the camouflage, money bomb, liberty or death shirts. Uh, we've got some really cool one-of-a-kind eBay uh, auction things like the Nyman microphone we use for about five years in here. Uh, it's up uh, there uh, on eBay. Uh, sledgehammers I just used to go through the wall. Next door, we're expanding. All that is at InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com. And uh, it's just one more thing that helps us fund the operation. It's really been essential to what we've done so far. And I want to thank those in the last four years that donated to the Money Bomb. Uh, so thank you so much. We'll continue transmitting until 11 a.m. tomorrow, and I'll be back Sunday, 4 to 6. Uh, going back to your calls now for Max Kaiser. Let's go to Jeff, and then we're going to go to uh, Mike and Hillbilly and others. Uh, Jeff, you're on the air with Max Kaiser. Go ahead. Hey, Alex. Hey, Kaiser. How you doing, man? Good. All right, look, I, I first I got a comment for both of you, and then I got a question for Kaiser. You know, with all the craziness and monotony that's going on with what these globalists are trying to accomplish, you guys really know how to make me laugh. Alex, two weeks ago, you called that older woman who got her free Obama phone. I think you said she was a cross between Elmo, Oscar the Grouch, and the Cookie Monster. I was crying when you said that. I could not stop laughing. And then you said, after Obama gave us a phone, he's going to do more. 
I mean, dude, you really know how to draw out the humor out of that. Well, stuff. I tell you, it's all gallows humor. It's just me joking around because I'm really upset about this, and I would go crazy if I didn't make jokes about it. And a few days after we did that, somebody actually found Elmo being interviewed on a TV show, I think it's in Canada, and actually put the audio to it. So we're going to play that in a moment for, for people watching over uh, at um, InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com because it's free, folks, free video stream uh, going till 11 a.m. But, yeah, I mean, look. It's good to have some local welfare. It's good to help people that are in trouble. But when it's federal and when it's designed to make people dependent, it creates nightmares like that. I want to get Max Kaiser's take on that and get your question for Max. But here is the Obama phone lady meets Elmo. Here it is. Mama. You got Obama phone? Yes, everybody in Cleveland, no minority, got Obama phone. Got Keep Obama in president, you know? He what? gave us a phone. He gave you he a phone. Do more. How do you give you a phone? You, you sign up if you're, you're on full stamps, you're on social security, you got low income, you disability. Hey, I'm voicing. Okay, what's wrong with Romney again? Romney, he sucks. There you go. Max Kaiser, what do you say to that information? I'm waiting for the Obama vibrator. You know, you should get uh, those. Stop now. Hey, Max, seriously, oh. you are an international TV host. What's going on? And then now once we get in the, this mode, it's not good. Uh, and don't give Obama any ideas. Please stop, sir. It's a family show. Every time you vote, you get a little sensation. You know, it's uh, give you a little. Okay, there you go. Now you're trying to do a comedy routine. Caller, do you have something serious to ask of Max? Yes, I do. It's besides the enema of the state article he did, which I found funny anyway. But I did want to say something seriously. Uh, one thing I do want to mention is that you were uh, Kaiser on the phone the last time, on the last interview with him, and I guess your segment was up and it closed out, so I didn't get all the total stuff on it. But uh, with this fiscal collapse coming and our American dollar being used worldwide as our currency as well, why do you believe this, this country is going to be the worst? Uh, place hit as opposed to let's say in Europe, which you're going to be when this collapse happens. And how come you're not going to be, let's say, where James Wesley said the better better place to be would be like the Northwest uh, part of uh, our country? How come you're going to be in Europe when this collapse happens? Well, the, as I've said about the currency collapse and the fiat money around the world, the U.S. dollar is a world reserve currency. There's and of the fiat money collapse it will hold on to that and be one of the last to collapse. The British pound is teetering, which is looking bad. The Japanese yen is teetering. Because the dollar is reserve currency, I have said that it would, you know, be around longer for that reason. The last to go, but when it goes, most of our experts, and I agree, it's going to go the hardest. Now, as far as my personal location, I am here to cover the collapse in Britain. And, but I am ready to go anywhere that is where I'm needed. You know, I'm not I'm not anywhere in space for the, the duration of this collapse. I think the, if people are genuinely interested in is truly insulating themselves from what's coming, they need to sort out their passport situation. There was a great story on Lee Rockwell today, which you can look it up, about how the State Department in the U.S will effectively make it impossible for Americans to get any passport at all. They're introducing a questionnaire, which uh, by the nature of the questionnaire, it's impossible to answer. They ask you things like um, just ri ridiculous questions. Oh, yeah, I had an article out of the Austin American Statesman from Sunday. I never covered it on air, guys. I tweeted a photo of it. I think it's out there in the stack. It's a you know, regular paper. That'll and, and it says... You know, should the government be asking uh, how many times you bathe a week? And that's right, the news. It says, like, it says, like, who was the doctor that delivered you and who name everyone in the operating theater when you were born? Questions like that that are impossible. No, but I'm saying us. now the census is yearly and they're asking uh, uh, how much money do you have? When do you go to work? When do you bathe? I mean, the government is just uh, listen, you're talking about capital controls. They there's the, the, the IRS is saying if we say you hadn't paid us, you're not leaving the country. I mean, they really I, I agree with you. That's the well, but they're not going to be able to leave the country in any case because you won't have a passport at all. I'm saying if you read this article on Lou Rockwell today, it says you as an American will be unable to 
get a passport under any circumstances. They don't want anyone leaving at all for any reason. No, that's and what the TSA is issue. about. And then they're going right. to just exactly. And they're going to stop real... you at checkpoints and drag you off. And it'll just be well, they had to drag off twenty thousand people this month, and they'll have like fat people, you know, globalists in uniforms, just machine gunning us. I mean, folks, we're going to be twenty times more evil than the Nazis. Look, look at the, we say, what uh, is there any inflation in the system? People say, no, there's no inflation. Look at how much it costs to buy a second passport. The cost of buying a second passport on Nevis St. Kitts is $220,000. Uh, and in the uh, Republic of Dominica, it costs uh, $100,000. The price just went up 20%. That's where the inflation is. The cost of buying your way out of the hellhole just went up 20%. That's inflation. Well, we're going to dig that up, but I know that's been happening. But that's the thing is that we sit here and make sick jokes about all this. This is really happening, and, and all the idiots that work for the system that are complying with this, you're helping manifest this. The public's to blame, too, but you're 10 times more to blame, 20 times Look, more to got, blame. It, 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 you need, if you can't get a passport right away, a second passport in another country, you know, you definitely need to open a bank account overseas, you know, one or two different territories. You need to internationalize your life. It doesn't mean that you are necessarily going to leave the United States right away, but you need to be able to pick up a bag and get out. If well, they need, like the fact that, what is it, 20-something percent of Americans even have a passport, and, and now it's going to just be, it's a conspiracy theory. There is no country outside the U.S. because they already don't know where Syria and Libya is. They already think bin Laden's hiding in your wife's brassiere. I'm serious. They're going to say, breastfeeding never happened. You'll be arrested if you say that went on. Knowing how to tie your shoelaces will be rocket science level after all the fluoride. Uh, and uh, saying there's a country outside the U.S., they're going to say it's a flat thing floating in space. I'm telling you, the public would believe that. If they, I'm not joking. If they told them that the, uh, that the, that the United States is a floating uh, thing in pea soup, the general public would believe it. And if they told the general public to slit their throats, they would do it. They love it. They just want total tyranny. They want to be destroyed. They love it. They love it. Uh, to, to the caller, I'm just saying, you need to... Um, diversify and internationalize and hedge yourself in, in a number of Where's a good countries. place? Where's a good place? I mean, it's hard to get to because you got to have a lot of cash all of it. What about Switzerland? Well, exactly. It requires, uh, but Switzerland actually has come under attack. You know, the Americas have attacked uh, Switzerland since uh, U Union Bank of Switzerland, UBS, the biggest bank in Switzerland. They bought Payne Weber in, in, in Wall Street, my old firm. And as such, the uh, various regulatory agencies in the U.S. have now entered Switzerland, and they've had all those private accounts open, wide open. So Switzerland is no longer a safe haven. It's not considered a safe yeah. haven in the U.S. I, I, I hear you. Let's jump to more calls. In Europe. Let's jump to more calls uh, here, and I do have that article now. They're printing it. But, but let's play this. I just don't want to make fun of the Obama phone lady. Let's remember Miss Teen USA 2007. This is the general public. In fact, th this is the brainiac. This is idiocracy that Mike Judge, of course, made a film about. This is the average person now that I talk to. Uh, I mean, our listeners obviously are informed and care. That's why you listen and, and check what we say. But remember, the general public, you wonder why they laugh at you when you warn them? Because they literally do not know what planet they're on. Literally. Okay, people think it's like evil to even know how to talk now. Let's go ahead and play this. Here it is. Recent polls have shown a fifth of Americans can't locate the U.S. on a world map. Why do you think this is? <laughs> I personally believe that U.S. Americans are unable to do so because so uh, as, uh... some people out there in our nation don't have maps. And uh, I believe that our ed education, like such as in South Africa oh, and yeah. uh, the Iraq, everywhere like such as, and... <laughs> I believe that they should, uh, our education over here in the U.S. should help the U.S. Uh, or should help South Africa and should help the Iraq and the Asian countries. Uh -huh. So we will be able to build up our future for our children. Thank you very much, South Carolina. <laughs> uh, and folks, I mean, I'm not joking. That A lot of people are like that. And they think, and they think it's cool. And, and, and I just can't imagine them during the collapse. They are going to literally, folks, if they tell the bureaucrats to line you and your family up and shoot you, they're going to do it because they like doing it. They like the power. I mean, I'm telling you, the, the, these bureaucrats will rip the flesh off your bones if they're told to. They hate this country and they hate anyone who can think. I'm sorry, Max, I'm ranting a bit. Caller, I guess that answers your question. Let's go to Mike in New Hampshire and then Hillbilly and the others. 
Uh, Mike, you're on the air, uh, light listening today during the evil money bomb. Uh, go ahead, sir. Fantastic. Thanks for taking my call, Alex. Uh, I'm thrilled to be here. Um, first, I'd like to I'd like to tell you that I, I, I'd like to show you that your efforts, what what they actually accomplish, the pebble in the pond. There's 350 million Americans, and if it wasn't for somebody sending me an email, um, there was a clip from American dictators one week after the 77 bombings. I wouldn't be the guy that I am today, and and I'll tell you who I am. I'm the crazy person that that's chirping everything that I that I see off the show, that's talking about uh, micronutrients, that's talking about the economy, that's talking about inflation, talk, you know, just right across the board. And, and uh, you know, when I mention something like fluoride, people will say, you know, they'll sit there and they'll, you know, they, they just, it's they don't understand wh where it's coming the from. The Americans such as... Uh... Yes, exactly, exactly. But but what I, I I'm not discouraged by it because I know that I'm planting seeds, and I know that down the line it's going to hit somebody upside the head like a brick, and they're like, "Oh my God, Mike Turner was right. He knew what he was talking about." And, and Max Kaiser, I I I first ran into you on the um, I, I think it was the Obama deception. Was it that or the fall of the republic or both? Republic, of course. Yeah. Well, I. I, I want to tell you, I, I, I watch your show now, and me and my guitarist, we both we both watch your show. Um, I Right off the bat, I sent it out. Sir, there's no such thing as guitar. No one can play an instrument. That's too advanced. Such as Americans, Obama phone, he going to do more? I got an excellent guitarist that's, that's my uh, com comrade in arms. In Next, you're going to tell me that mammals are supposed to breastfeed, please. Well, or, the, you know. or, the, or that beef is supposed to eat grass. I mean, oh, ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, come on. Oh, man. I mean, come on. Look, I just want well, to George you know, Washington I, is the is a good guy. FEMA says he's bad. Well, you know, I, I think I heard somewhere that he was a terrorist. Well, that's what FEMA teaches. It must be true. I mean, they're not the bad guys saying the founder of the country's bad. They're the good guys. Yeah, might is right, right? I well, mean, they I, have all the guns. That makes them right. Well, they, yeah, well, yeah. They, well, they, they 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 tell us they have all the guns and strut around all day bugging their eyes out at us. But I just just I've only got a couple of guns, and I'll use them if I have to. Oh, how and, dare and, you! Am I interrupting you guys? No, uh, uh, well, I'm uh, sorry if I'm uh, you know uh, interrupting. Do you want an Obama I, phone? Maybe you guys uh, need a room or something. Okay, uh, go ahead, Kaiser. Thank you, sir, for the call. Kaiser, yeah, okay. don't have fantasies here on air, please. Come well, on, go what's ahead. going on? I mean, I feel like I'm stuck in an elevator with two guys, and uh, you're going up somewhere, and I'm trying to get... <laughs> what's the question? Okay, uh, yeah, uh, uh, caller, did you have a question? Uh, he just He's wanted... He, he just, just wanted, wanted to... Call to... watches my show. He oh, just... That's great, man. You're, you know, no, you, this is the old mean stockbroker coming up, telling old lady, buy the stock, you wench! Listen, man, the give, thing... Give me your money, goddammit! What are you waiting for? Okay, stop, stop, Kaiser. This is out of control, okay? Now, let's not use the Lord's name in vain. That's bad bad luck. Now, listen. Sorry, Lord. The Lord's for... a client of mine. Oh, uh, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it! Uh, Look, stop no. it right now! My, my point is, Kaiser, is yeah. that he just wanted to tell you he liked your show and you insulted him. You're well, look, the, the star of Hawaii Five O was my favorite actor, Jack Lord. That's who I'm referring to. I don't even know what that means. Is that okay? Let's talk to Hillbilly. You're on the air with, uh, well, Max Kaiser. Hey, how are you guys doing? Oh, we're doing all right. <laughs> Sounds like it. Hey, listen, I'm a Prison Planet TV member, Infowars team member, and uh, I shop at Infowars shop all the time. Thank you. Uh, Great stuff. Thank you. Uh, listen, uh, real quick, you're looking, I heard you mention before you're looking for a ministry to support Michael Rood, R-O-O-D, Rood. He is on the fight against the New World Order, just like you. Great stuff. You might want to check it out. Uh, second of all, have you ever heard of the Gerson Miracle? Uh, it rings a small bell. Uh, what was it? Was that when Max Kaiser okay. grew wings and flew around the room? <laughs> well, no, it was actually um, a doctor named Maxwell Gerson that, uh, um, that the, the, the elite's poisoned, actually. He came up with a cure for cancer. His daughter is carrying on his work in Tijuana, Mexico, curing the cancer, and she claims she can cure any chronic disease. Well, there are a lot of treatments that they, sure, sure, there are a lot of treatments that they block. Uh, God bless you, sir. I appreciate your call. We're going to calls here for Max Kaiser. Well, I want to say something. Mm-hmm. 
The, um, I want to bring it back down to something serious here. We were talking about these countries, different countries. You're saying, oh, Switzerland or different. You know, the two countries that are bordering America right now, Canada and Mexico, Canada has become a fortress. If you've ever tried to go into Canada, it is extremely difficult to do so, and you can't move money back and forth out of Canada. And people know this. But look, Mexico is becoming this way, too. You know, there's more pressure to keep Americans out of Mexico now than the other way around. There's Because Mexico, due to their huge oil position, et cetera, is becoming a, a state that is trying to keep Americans out within five or six years. You're going to see American, that whole wall between U.S. and Mexico, there to keep Americans out of Mexico. And by the way, Max, when you talk about this, it totally creeps me out because I know all the points you're saying are true. I have so much data on it, and it really is upsetting to be sitting here and seeing them just clamp down to steal everybody's wealth and property. And I don't even care about that. That It's my family. And then I've sworn to try to defend this republic, and it's a new world order. There's nowhere to run. But... Man, I just hope the public knows we're not playing games here. Yeah, no, I mean, the, the, the point is that if you think that you're, what you're saying or what I'm saying is uh, abstract in any sense or in the far horizon and is not immediate, look at what's happening to the two countries bordering America, Canada, and they got the huge pipeline. That's the, that's the as you cover on your show, that goes from Canada down to Mexico. And which is servicing actually, uh, you know, not America, but uh, foreign entities. And that is opening up a very strong police presence that is not answerable to any of those three countries individually, but for them collectively. And that's where the U.S. loses its sovereignty. You are right in the, 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 the kill zone, if you will, of that phenomenon, because that pipeline... Oh, no, no, no. They're using pipelines and roads as multinational zones. The U.N., on record, says they've taken over Austin on their website right, so and, that, and all the local right towns. There. Yeah, yeah. That's right there, right in your backyard. I mean, that's really happening now. And that's the, that should give people, listeners, the idea that this is not something we're talking about is in the fanciful future. This is happening now. It's unbelievable. I mean, it, 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 it is just crazy. I, I mean, it'd be, it'd be better if the U.S. did collapse like the old Soviet Union because... Because if they're able to keep this going, I mean, there's nothing they won't steal because the public are thumb-sucking, mindless jellyfish begging to be gang-raped by the government. I mean, I just... Well, the mathematics are horrible because going back 40 years, which was the beginning of the post-gold standard and the creation of derivatives, there's been this tug-of-war between GDP growth, uh, GDP growth and debt creation. And uh, for years, you've had this give and take. You've had periods of slowdowns and recessions where the debt had become a, a overwhelming the GDP growth. Uh, and then you'd have these periods of growth to counteract that. But starting in 2007, and this is what makes this crisis different than any other crisis in American history before it, is that the debt now is so completely outrageously high as compared to any possible GDP growth scenario to grow America out of it, that it's quite disturbing. And I'll give you this interesting statistic. The amount of GDP growth needed to get America out of its current economic problems would require burning more barrels of oil than there are in the ground. In other words, you've got about a trillion barrels of oil that have been burned since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. There are, by some estimates, a trillion dollars, a trillion barrels left. If you were to burn the one trillion barrels of oil, you would not generate enough GDP growth to generate the taxes required to pay the existing debt. Yeah, and so they're going to, as Gerald Salente says, just go to pure prisons and giant death camps and people in black uniforms stomping around everywhere. I mean, it's just, it's hell itself being released. And then hopefully we got ahead of this and have exposed it enough where they're going to have trouble rolling it out. But we've got to fight them at every level and realize we have a bug-eyed, beady-eyed, criminal, evil government run by mega corporations with maniac heads and bankers who are well, all... Uh, uh, let me ask you this. Going back to the American Revolution, only a third of the people living in America wanted the revolution. Uh, it was it was 3% started it and then 5% won it and, uh, as actual combatants, about 10 percent support it's less than a third it's like okay so then you had like a third or so were sympathetic to the british and the remainder were completely ambivalent yeah no actually about 70 percent uh, well, I mean, back okay, and forth. So I, 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 I mean, it went okay. back and forth but you're right more than okay, half so were, oh, no, well, let me break it down because it's been looked about half were tories and then about uh 90 percent of the others 
were just thumb sucking on the fence, and it was really overall less than 10% that were against being total slaves. All right, so you have my question then. You've got less than, you know, you only had a few, a few percentage points of the population was actually for revolution, and you only had a few thousand men, because, you know, there was not really, you're just talking about men at that point, maybe, okay, a few women. Uh, who put that together. So now you flash forward to 2012. We're at a similar situation where we're not being occupied by the British, we're being occupied by bankers and global bankers, and there's five or ten of the major banks, and they have us by the throat because they control the money, they control the interest rates, they control the debt, and this is well documented on your show. So is are a sufficient number of people in the U.S. right now that are alive and breathing, and they, are they coming together to do what needs to be done. Because under the Constitution, it says quite clearly that if tyrants take over the government, it's the constitutional responsibility of the people to take back yeah, the government. It's not a right, it's a duty. Uh, and, 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 and that's in the Declaration of Independence as okay. well. That's right. It's codified in the Second Amendment. I'm not going to get into more detail than that, but that's where you find it. Is there going to be uh, some kind of attempt to a stage a a new declaration. Well, well here I mean here's the problem. The guys back then were not in 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 Arizona running drones killing people and getting medals for it. They had been in constant vicious wars with tomahawks hacking each other up. Both sides used those and we're just we're actually a very intelligent and formed vicious killers. Okay, and, so and, 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 well, I'm just saying the men are not like that today. No. They were battle ready. They had already uh, they were had spent years enduring, you know, going back to the Pilgrims, an extremely rough time in establishing this country. So they were rough and ready, and they took on what they needed to be done. So you're saying that that doesn't exist. You've had too many years of the soft kill, as you say, the the the, the media, the drugs, etc. You just don't have the necessary critical mass to stage the the the, the proper. Uh, re well, I mean, take the, the take the founders. They lost almost every battle the first five years, but they never gave up. It was the resistance that was unstoppable you know being serious about this uh max this is a scientific eugenics based gulag archipelago casino gulag that you coined the term for so you know that and it's scientific we've got to get the minions of the system to realize they're being poisoned they're being dumbed down uh, this is beyond i mean i mean british intelligence 150 years ago 160 years ago got all the top minds together and developed this current plan we're under and they have been following the same plan, and they are pretty much in control. And so the, my biggest thing is is psychologically with the truth, pointing out to minions of the system, hey, you know, do you really understand you're being poisoned and killed and dumbed down as well? And I think it is that absolute spiritual mental revolution that is going to change this. We have to defensively not go to the camps and say no and, you know, uh, do that. Uh, but, you know, the Jedi uses the force for uh, knowledge and defense, never for attack, to be cheesy and use a quote from that. Any type of violence that they staged Oklahoma City, they staged this new, you know, patsy thing with the with the Federal Reserve to try to look like they're the victims when they're the violent ones. So I just really, you know, uh, we're not in 1775. Uh, and uh, look, if a civil war starts and we got to defend ourselves, you know, Nobody's taking my kids to a FEMA camp for pervert New World Order to have their way with them. You know, it just ain't happening. Uh, but, you know, um, uh, getting serious here and closing comments on what you see coming up. And, again, what the collapse that you see coming by next April will look like in closing. Max Kaiser of MaxKaiser.com. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter. <laughs> No, I, uh, I would say that um, if you notice, the strategy of the globalists, you know, is to pick off the most vulnerable first, uh, build their war chest, and move on up the scale of vulnerability. We saw that in Europe. They picked off Ireland and Greece, and then they're moving on to Spain and Italy because they make money uh, picking off these smaller countries, and then they move on to bigger countries. I think in response, since we're dealing with a globalized problem, why not send 10 thousand of your listeners or people around the world who are sympathetic to fighting the new world order why not why not have those people go to athens right now and be a part of the revolution that's happening in greece today because it's a global problem we need global solutions america the fight by the time it gets to america it'll be all over we got us and you said earlier in your show you were saying something to the effect 
that or when your, your guest was talking about it, uh, you have to dig down deep to find the root cause of the effect. The cause is sometimes hidden or mastered beneath several layers. Right now, in Athens, is the front line of the fight against the globalists. And therefore, it behooves anyone who wants to defeat the globalists to send a force right now to Athens to help fight against the globalists. You need a front. Open up these fronts. You need a front in Greece, Alex, is what I'm saying. Well, look, to have right. a front against banker occupation, people have got to understand it's a new type of war with mega banks that are monopoly people working with government to disenfranchise all of us. Max Kaiser, thank you so much for spending time with us. All right, buddy. See you later. There he goes. Visit InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want.